Hi everybody, welcome to the Knitting with Lucy podcast. This is episode 17. My name is Abby, Lucy's my cat, and she is in the other room. We'll see if she makes an appearance. Kind of doubt it, she's enjoying her bed that we got her a little while ago. Um, I'm looking a little washed out in this lighting, but it's sort of the best lighting that I got right now, so we're going with it. Welcome to my living room hallway today. Eventually, I guess you'll see my entire apartment. Uh, so a fair amount of things to show you today, mostly sewing. Um, I do have a knitting work in progress. Before we get to that, I should let you know where you can find me on social media. Uh, so you can find me on Ravelry as Long Ride Home and on Instagram as The Jardin Fleur. Uh, Feel free to follow me, friend me, message me on either of those platforms. I pretty check those very often, so I'll get back to you very quickly. Uh, let's get started. Um, first, I'm going to show you my knitting work in progress. Oops, sorry. Okay, so... This is the, it's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern. It's the Guernsey Triangle. This is a black and white printout, but it is supposed to look like that. Uh, so it's got patterns of like diagonal, uh, knit and pearls, and checkerboard. If you hear the music and stuff, all that in the background. I apologize, I live on a, an apartment building and lots of things go on in and outside of it. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm knitting this out of, um, oops, there goes a motorcycle it sounds like. I'm knitting this out of Quince & Co. Finch. I had bought three skeins of this last summer and then never did anything with it. I was going to make a baby sweater, uh, but then I decided that I didn't think it was, it made sense to knit a sweater for a baby and a yarn that really ha would have special washing instructions since it's 100% wool and not super wash. Um, so it's a little scrunch up on the needles. I have done all the charts so far, and then I have a few more repeats to go. I'm not sure how big I'm going to make it. You can make it in the shawl version or the kerchief version. Um, I think my gauge is a little smaller than that of the pattern, so it's just I'm just going to keep repeating the charts until I get to the right size. So that's actually, in the past when I tried to put this on video, it's really blown. It's really um, saturated it, but that's actually a pretty good uh, representation of the color. It's blowing me out and my face out. I look like blank as a, as a sheet, but uh, that's a pretty good representation of the color and what's going on here. Probably as I move it closer, it might, yeah, that's now we're in orange territory. Um, but yeah, so it's, I'm really liking how it's coming out. The Quince & Co. Finch is a, a worsted spun, tightly spun four ply yarn. It's good for socks. Very different properties than uh, Brent and Tate Loft, which is their fingering weight uh, woolen spun yarn that has all different sorts of like flex in it, different colors, a little more heathered looking. So this is definitely a different look than anything made out of that the yarn that the pattern calls for would be. But um, I, I am liking how it's coming out. Like I said, it has really nice stitch definition. Um, and I like kind of putting it up to me to see how it might look. It's cute. Um, I am making this tentatively for my husband. Um, I've been, I, I, I think maybe just like summer or end of summer always makes me end up being in a knitting rut because the same thing happened to me last year. So. I had been in a knitting rut basically since I finished my last shawl and I didn't want to make another shawl for myself, but I did not mind, I didn't mind knitting another shawl. Um, 
instead of going into a really big project. So, and I wanted to use what I use what I have. So uh, I'm happy to be using an older stash yarn. And um, if it comes out and he likes it and he wants it, then it could be his, or we can share it. <laughs> if he's not into it, then that's okay too. So uh, I'm liking it a lot so far, though. I feel like I've shown it to you a lot already, but I. That's the only knitting that I have. Um, I'm knitting this on, in case you're curious, my uh, Chow Gu interchangeable needles. And um, it's on size 4s, which is what the pattern calls for. I didn't gauge swatch or anything. Um, so like I said, it kind of looks like my stripes or my, my chart repeats. They look a little bit narrower in real life than they appear to look in the pictures. But that's all relative, so so far so good. I'm enjoying knitting on it. You know, it's simple. I do have to look at the chart because I just always I, I can I can get messed up very quickly, but it's easily memorizable. It's nothing that you really have to be constantly looking at. And uh yeah. Okay, so that's the knitting. Then we're gonna get into the sewing, which is gonna be the, the big part of the episode. Uh before we get into sewing. I'm going to do sort of acquisitions, but knitting related acquisitions, and later I'll get into, I'll do the sewing, and then I'll do the sewing acquisitions. Uh, so, oh, I forgot something. Hold on. I'll be right back. I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to the kitchen right over there, and then I'll come back. Be right back. It was my birthday earlier this month, or in, I'm sorry, in, in August, beginning of August. And in addition to buying me my sewing machine, I can't remember whether I, what I spoke about last time, whether I mentioned that I got a new sewing machine, um, or my adult sewing machine as I call it, for my birthday, but um, my husband did buy that for me. But in addition, he surprised me with another gift, uh, which was he ordered off Etsy, and he said to me that he knew that would mean something to me because I like Etsy. <laughs> um, but uh, first he, had, he got me this knitting related mug and it says, just let me finish this row with little needles and garter stitch little scarf or whatever. Um, it says it on both sides. I have been getting more into drinking coffee lately. I never used to like coffee. And uh, he has his own mugs and I've been commenting on how I didn't have any special mugs and he said, I always say this to him, so he thought that it was funny to get that. Uh, I guess I'll put that over there. And then he also got me from this Etsy store, and now I don't know which one it is. I lost the card, unfortunately, but it's the stitch marker set, and it says knitting kitten on it with a cat on it. And inside are these really cute, it's one of these slider kind of containers, which is really handy. Uh, but inside are these really cute, um, excuse me, kitty stitch markers. And they're pretty big. Uh, let me show you a regular size stitch marker. So... Here is like a regular size stitch marker that I normally use, and then here is the the cat. So it's pretty big. Um, I think I could really probably only use these. I mean, it's practically like a ring. Um, I feel like I could probably only use these if I'm knitting with like a bulky weight yarn and big needles, uh, which is handy. Uh, I mentioned it to him, and he said that he thought they looked big uh, compared to what I normally use, but uh, he didn't really get it to me just as though I can use it, but because he thought I would find it cool, and I do, so it's just kind of the thought that, that counts. Um, she sent with it a little baggie with a couple other stitch markers, uh, some just like black and brown of the light 
the light bulb um, pin stitch markers, which is always handy. But then uh, there's also, I'm trying to separate it out. It's not connected to another one, but I just feel like it would be easier to keep it in the bag and take it out. Here we go. But also in it is a mini stitch marker, and it's similar to the other one, which is like a little kitty. So that's, that's handy because when you're using really tiny needles, it's always nice to have that. Okay, so let's get on to sewing, shall we? Uh, so when I got my uh, sewing machine, I wanted to do a project to get used to it. So I have been pretty inspired lately by all the bento bags that I've been seeing online on Instagram and uh, French Association sells bento bags, and so I decided I wanted to make my own. So I looked up a online tutorial. I found a free one. I can link it in the show notes, which, by the way, will be down below. And um, I made this bento bag, and it's really kind of uh, it's a little quirky of a bag because I definitely made mistakes. Um, I, I was struggling with this with just sewing straight lines, which is not something that I think I would normally have an issue with, but because of the type of foot that was uh, by default on the machine, uh, I since realized that the machine doesn't come with a quarter inch foot or like a quilter's foot, which is basically what I'm used to sewing with. So I ordered one and since then that's been much easier, but um, so it's a little bit wonky, but this is a, a cotton and steel fabric that I had ordered a while back. Um, from Fancy Tiger Crafts, and I have a lot of it because I was going to make a top out of it, but it's not really my color, so uh, I made the bag. So we'll put my mug in it, for instance, although that's probably not the best <laughs> example. And then you just tie it up. So it's kind of funky. It's, it's a little kind of a weird shape. It, it actually is looking good with the mug inside as an example, but uh, yeah, I've been using it for my knitting and uh, it's it's a handy, it's always handy to have, have bags and this is very different than uh, any other bag that I have, so that's a fun little project and it was a free tutorial online, so there that is. Uh, so then the next thing that I did was, last time I showed you, I was wearing my muslin for um, Sonia Phillips 100 Axe Sewing shirt number one, which is right here. So this is what I had on last time that I showed you, and I was really, really happy with how, sorry, I can't really tell what you're seeing, how this came out and how it fit on me. Um, I really liked how it looked. And so I went ahead and I sewed up another one with no modifications out of a cotton yarn that I got at Clementine in Rockland, Maine when I was on vacation in Maine uh, in the beginning of August. And here it is. This is a pretty lightweight, really soft almost like flannel-y, but not flannel cotton. Uh, the color is very off in, in this, um, in the computer screen. And this one came out okay. I don't know if you can really tell when it's on the hanger or in the video here, but the neckline came out kind of odd. Um, if you haven't made this pattern, or if you don't recall what I said last time about the Muslin I, muslin I made is that with this pattern you cut out your own neckline. It's not um, on the template for you, which is nice because then you can really customize whether you want a scooped neckline or uh, a shallower neckline, which is what I was going for. So I did that, but unfortunately, and this seems to be something I have an issue with because <laughs> it happened again in another project, which I'll show you. The neckline is just not smooth, it's not so even, it's a little bit square um, on this side, I think. Square over here, 
which side is it? I'm not sure. It, it's very, it's pretty obvious on. Um, and unfortunately, I really haven't worn this with, and I haven't worn this out at all, even though it's, it's fine. It just doesn't seem to work with my clothes. Um, I did try a new technique on this one, which I'm pretty proud of. So it's really a shame that it's, I haven't really been able to wear it. Wear it. Also, for some reason, this fabric is pretty staticky. I did French seams all throughout. So there are no exposed seams at all. So that is a French seam right there. I don't know if you can tell because it's a dark, darker fabric, but you know, it's, it's finished perfectly inside. Nothing fraying unlike any of anything else that I've made. Um, this is probably the best that I've tried of a finishing technique when you don't have a serger. It does take twice the work though. Um, it's not complicated, but it just takes, it takes work. Um, I'll put this on over what I'm wearing. I think that would be fine and you can maybe get a better idea of how it looks. So, obviously you're going to see the what I'm wearing underneath, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, the neckline just doesn't look right. It, it looks fine on camera, right there. It's like a little bit, let me move my hair, it's a little bit like jagged right over there. Like it should be scooped out a little bit. I don't know, but uh, here's the top. It doesn't look great with my pants. Like it doesn't look good with anything I own. It really doesn't. So, yeah, that's the top. I mean, it's really comfortable. It's cute. It, it's just not, I don't know. I don't know if it's the fabric. I don't know if it really is that neckline that does funky things. But, yeah, it, it's definitely staticky. I'm having issues with it while I'm wearing it right now. Um, sorry. So, that's the shirt number one. I really struggled with this one over the muslin. The muslin was a lot easier to sew, and that was mainly because of this fabric. Um, the muslin is a little bit of a stiffer cotton, and this was just constantly sticking to itself, and no matter what I did when I was folding it to trace the patterns and cut, it just seemed like it was uneven. So the whole shirt is slightly biased. <laughs> and I don't know if you can tell, but just the whole thing is. It just goes that way. So that's that. Um, then... I went ahead and I sewed a real version of the two muslins that I did for the uh, Willow tank top. So this is the muslin, if you can recall, and this is the shirt. So unfortunately, this has just got back from the laundromat. I don't have laundry that I can can a, a wash dryer that I can access in my building that is clean so I have to take all my laundry to the laundromat or hand wash and I believe that I pre-washed this fabric that is the belief I had when I made the shirt I'm 99% sure however the major shrinkage that occurred, unfortunately, when I got it back, since I just got it washed again in a laundromat, supposedly, makes me question that belief as a delusion because it shrank a lot, unfortunately. Um, I did post photos on my Instagram when I first finished it, and I did wear it to work the next day. Um, and so what happened was I wore it to work, and then I um, went grocery shopping, and by the time I came home, it must have been as a result of something I was handling or rubbing up against in the store or the bags, but I got this, like, black 
goo that rubbed off on certain areas of the shirt. And I was planning on hand washing it anyway since I'd made it. It's a little bit, I felt like a gentle kind of thing to wash. And when you bring clothes to the laundromat, everything gets washed and dried on high heat, which is not the greatest for clothes. Um, but because I got that on that, I knew it was really wasn't going to be able to effectively get rid of it when I hand washed it because really I don't have much patience for hand washing beyond just filling the sink with soap and water and letting the items soak. Um, I knew it needed a little bit of agitation. So I went to the laundromat where I, it was dropped off the laundromat, washed, just got it back, opened up the bag and it shrank a lot. It is overall about probably an inch and a half shorter. Everything shrank up. It does actually fit better in the neckline and armholes, surprisingly, although I guess not so surprisingly. It was gapping a little bit over here pre-wash. Now it's pretty much perfect. Um, the only thing other than the fact that it's shorter and it is, it's probably more of like the cropped version, which is cropped three inches from the standard, when I really only cropped it two inches. <laughs> so it went up quite a bit, and uh, you know, you're going to show some belly, which is not great, and these are high-waisted pants. But the only other issue is that the darts, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Let me turn this light off. I don't know if you can see the dart. But the dart is from here to here, which is higher than it's supposed to be by almost maybe three quarters of an inch. The dart was pretty much, yeah, you can't tell, uh, oh there you go, you can see it there. There's one right there. The dart was pretty much on target when I initially made it. Now it's high. It looks, it looks high. I don't think it's super obvious, and if you're not really looking, then you won't be able to really tell. So I'm still going to try and wear it. It's unfortunate that it shrank quite a bit. Um, hopefully it's still wearable for me. Uh, the neckline got a little bit funky <laughs> when I did this one. Um, it's uneven, once again, because I, I kept cutting it out. I did a hollow chest adjustment on this version, uh, which I had never tried before, which is supposed to help minimize uh, gapping in the neckline, and it absolutely did. It looks pretty much, it's good. Even better now that I washed it, or it shrank. Um, but when you do the hollow chest neckline, it brings everything in, and so the neckline was like a weird U shape. Uh, or, I mean, all necklines are U-ish, but it was, it was just, it looked weird, so I needed to just, like, carve it out, and in doing that, it got a little bit uneven, and once again, it's, like, hard to tell in this, I think it's on this side. I do think it's less obvious post-shrinkage, though, so, I don't know, I mean, if I can make it work with the length that it is right now, then I'm happy and I don't really mind the fact that the bust dart is an inch higher than it should be. Um, but I just, I really want to know whether I did in fact pre-wash it because I just purchased more of the same fabric, which I'm going to show you. And it would be really good to know if I need to have it sent through the laundromat twice in order to get it to the total shrinkage amount. Um, or I just had a complete delusion that I washed it in the first place. I did pre-wash other fabrics that I know for a fact I pre-washed. And I'm thinking it's possible I didn't pre-wash this, but I'm 99% sure I did. So I would I just think that that's bizarre that it would shrink that much after having already been washed on high heat and then dried on high heat. Um, so... I do have one more finished sewing object to show you, believe it or not. I've been working hard the last month or so. So I just finished these today. I, I had started them last week, had uh, cut out the fabric and everything, and I sewed them today. And these are pajama pants. 
So here they are. This was some of the fabric that, they look massive. Massive. And they're big, they are big. But um, bear with me. This is uh, quilting cotton fabric that I ordered from Fancy Tiger Crafts in the summer alongside some of the other fabric I showed you that I didn't particularly like. Um, and so I decided to practice this pattern. So this is my wearable-ish muslin. And it is wearable, it's pajama pants. Um, I just made too big of a size, which is not surprising. <laughs> I'm gonna show you what it's supposed to look like. So I was in Barnes and Noble a few weeks ago and I found this book and it's really awesome. It's the Lada Jan's Daughter Everyday Style. And there is a whole bunch of patterns in here and it cost $30 and it's less expensive on Amazon. I think it's more like $25 on Amazon, but I did buy it in Barnes and Noble. Um, there's at least 10 patterns in here. Uh, some of them are, are different versions of the same pattern, but let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So um, really it's, it's less because there's like two or three versions of some of them, like the skirt has a short, medium, long version. Uh, the top has a, one of the tops has a regular shirt length and tunic length and caftan length. length. Um, and it's a really beautiful book, it's, it's great. And when you consider that patterns like from Green Line Studio are 16, 17, 15 in that range dollars a piece, the fact that you get that many patterns for even $30, the more expensive version is a really good deal. And the style is very similar to that as, the style is very similar to like the Green Line Studio style. So let me show you a picture of the pants if I can find them. Uh, they're all, they're throughout the book because it's nice, they show them in all different ways to wear each of the clothes. Uh, here is one version. So they're meant to be a little bit loose. Uh, let me show you another version. Here's the shorts version, which is not the kind that I made. But, um, hold on. Here. So they're really cute. There is a bunch of versions on Ravelry. Um, and it's not complicated. The, the thing that I found to be hardest about this book is the patterns are all basically printed on two big sheets of paper. So they all overlap each other, so it's very confusing, and I made some mistakes. Um, but uh, what I struggle with with choosing sizing is that I do ha I'm do. i very straight up and down, so my waist proportion to my hips, and I have very narrow hips, is much larger than like the waist size should be for my hips. So I graded up to medium, and I think that didn't help me. I should have just chosen the extra small throughout. But um, these are the pants. I'm pretty happy with them. It's my first time making anything like pants. Um, and it does have an elastic in here. They are big on me, but I mean, it's, it's pajama pants. They're not massively larger than my regular pajama pants are. And on... I always like to talk about the finish. The way I finished the shirt was really sloppily. I tried to zigzag the seams and it washed okay. I look so washed out in this in this podcast. I oh terrible. I'm dealing with it. I'm gonna post this. I already I, I tried making a podcast a few weeks ago and I never posted it because I was not happy with it. But um so what I did for this one is I used my overcast foot for the first time and I used one of the overcast stitches. Let's see, I don't, it, obviously it's not gonna focus, but so it catches along the side of it. 
and I think it's going to be okay. So it did, unfortunately, something got messed up right in the crotch of my pants, and when I was looking at the insides of it, when I was looking at it after I finished, it, it was unraveling, so I had to restitch along there, so hopefully it's okay. But, uh, yeah, one thing to mention is that this pattern calls for more fabric than I had. I only had two yards of this. So I did have to chop and piece together. So the front is all one piece, but the back legs, back of each of the legs has a piece on the bottom that's pieced. And I was going to just do that on the back and front and use a different fabric, but I had enough when I pieced together the fabric of the same fabric to do that, to, to use it. And I was going to do it in the front and back, but I was, I was really struggling with it for some reason. So I was just able to get pieces cut for the back and I didn't need to chop into the front because I was able to fit the whole front on it. Um, and I think it's fine. I don't think it's that noticeable. And it's in the back and it's pajama pants. It's not like it, I'm wearing this in public. So that's fun. And it, it, the directions were very, clear and simple and straightforward and easy to follow and uh, yeah what time are we at 30 minutes um I'm going to show you a couple more things from this book just because I really like it and then I'm going to show you uh, some of the fabric that I got the fabric that I got um, Really cute jacket, and it comes in a cropped length and a longer length. I'll show you the longer length. Super cute. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's she wearing uh, one of the tops and the Owen pants again. Sorry, I know there's a glare. Super cute. This book just like it, it just seemed like something that I could grow into with my skills, which is nice. I really like this dress, and this is one that I would definitely consider making. Super cute. <clears throat> and I like how throughout the book she shows the same patterns with different versions. So like here is a really pretty black dress that she added a tie for to cinch it in the middle. But really, this is how it would look otherwise. That's just really creative. They're just really, really, really cute um, patterns. So there's the pants again mind you not look like that <laughs> and a simple top that she has so uh, I'm excited to keep working on this I definitely recommend it I um, want to show you the two fabrics that I got the plan was to make more of these tops but I'm not sure whether I will however I only have two yards of each so I don't know if it's enough to like make an, another attempt at the, it's not enough to make attempt at, at the Owen pants. <clears throat> so these are both Robert Kaufman X Essex. This is in the spice colorway, which it looks like straight up mustard in, in this lighting. Um, it's not quite as yellow in real life. Let me turn off the lamp. Okay. Obviously not accurate either, but it's it's a little bit more brown with gold threading running running through it. I was choosing between this and the cinnamon colorway, and I think I should have chosen cinnamon. What I was going for was the equivalent of uh, the gingerbread uh, colorway from Quince & Co., which is like a really warm reddish brown, and that's obviously not what I got. But um, I'll figure something out with it. And then I got this one, and these are by the by the way, uh, linen and cotton blends. And this is not actually, I realized after I ordered this, it's not the same fabric, it's another Robert Kaufman, I think it's called the Brussels Washer, which is a linen rayon blend, and 
This is a linen cotton blend. It feels very similar. I don't really know what the difference would be, but um, this colorway, I can't remember what it is, um, but it's basically like a, a light gray, and then the other, the cross threads are this blue. So it's, it's a very cool color. And you really can't tell from the lighting. Let's turn off the lamp again. Yeah, that's just going to show everything as blue. Uh, so yeah, that's all I got. I'm sorry for the awful washed out lighting today and me looking like I'm close to death. Uh, I hope this was somewhat interesting for you. Let me know what you think. I've been enjoying my adventures in sewing, although it hasn't been particularly successful but fairly successful overall. I definitely feel like I'm learning, which is nice. Um, it's hard work for me. <laughs> it really is. It, it causes a lot of uh, specifically really lower back pain and hip pain while I am doing all this stuff. But uh, I enjoy it. I really need to make a day of it when I do it or a morning or an afternoon of it. So it's really only, it's really only something I can do on the weekends, which works for me. Um, but yeah, that's it. Let me know what you think. I hope to talk with you soon. Have a good one. Bye.